Hey all you little monsters, this little monster girl Desi, coming at ya. And today I have something new for you guys. I'm going to be starting a line of videos called Monster Bites. Monster Bites will be about different kinds of monsters and the information that I've collected about them summarized. I've actually been wanting to do something like Monster Bites for a while now. I really enjoy talking about monsters and how many different kinds there are out there, as well as theorizing about them as well. So I thought that since it's October, no better time to start than now. But before we get started, I would like you all to please note that this monster has been around for a very long time and there's a lot of different stories about it out there. So if I get a few things wrong, I'm so very sorry. I had to generalize a lot of this as well as throwing in a few of my own theories to try and make sense of each thing. If you don't agree with some of my theories, don't worry. I'll leave links below to some of the sites that I used and you can make your own conclusion about this monster. So, let's get started. For today's Monster Bite topic, I decided to do it on the Navajo Native American urban legend known as the Skinwalker. From the information I've managed to find, the Skinwalker is both feared and respected by the Navajo people, to the point they don't like to talk about them in public. Seeing as the Skinwalker is a shapeshifter, this makes sense, so they're probably worried one is nearby eavesdropping. You can find stories about the Skinwalker throughout Navajo Native American history, and a lot of times they don't end very well, especially if somebody is shit-talking them. A few sources I found online say that the Skinwalker can never revert back to being human after transforming. However, other sources I found say that they're human during the day while taking beast form at nighttime. And as for its true form, nobody actually knows what it looks like, though I like to think that the true form of a skinwalker would be a mashup of multiple animals as well as human, considering it's a creature that can take multiple forms and was once human as well. And that made it easier for me to be able to draw one. Fun fact, the monster Sona that I use is actually a skinwalker, which is what I'm drawing in this speed paint. From the information I've managed to gather on skinwalkers, it seems that skinwalkers transform into wolves, hawks, foxes, coyotes, and even deer sometimes. Though no matter what, they can never seem to get the transformation correctly. Sometimes when they transform, they'll seem humanoid, almost like an animal trying to become human or sometimes the proportions will be completely off about them. Other times it'll seem like they're a mashup of two animals. Like, say, you see a wolf, but it seems to have a body more similar to a mountain lion or a deer. And that in itself can be very disturbing to see. While transforming into a human, however, they can almost get the transformation completely correct. In most stories that I listen to, they seem to be able to mimic a human completely, however they can never get the emotion correct. However, when mimicking human voices, they cannot get that right either. When mimicking a human voice, it'll often seem recorded, or maybe even rehearsed, like they're trying to mimic it but they can't seem to get the emotion into the voice. Despite the fatal flaw of not being able to mimic anything perfectly, Skinwalkers are also said to be extremely strong and incredibly fast as well, but they can't seem to enter a house without permission, which is pretty polite for a monster. Another thing about them is that they also reek really badly, like rotting meat or a corpse. I don't know why this is, and I don't know whether it's true or not, because I've never met one. It's just what I've read. As for how a person becomes a skinwalker, there are a bunch of different stories on the subject, though it usually starts out as a shaman. In some stories, they'll transform themselves into a beast by wearing the cloaks of animals, and in other stories, it's that they kill somebody extremely close to them, and that act alone is what turns them into a beast. Both are pretty legit, and both are pretty messed up at the same time considering both versions of the story has to do with killing somebody close to them in order to permanently become a monster. And I think that's pretty messed up. Though apparently there are some stories where a person is born a skinwalker if they're a descendant of one, which is kind of better, considering the alternative. 
There are a lot of different stories out there about skinwalkers and people's encounters with them. Some stories they come off as malicious and cunning, but in other stories they come off as just territorial and curious. In all honesty, I think it depends on what kind of person they were before they transformed into a skinwalker. Though personally, since I've never encountered a skinwalker before, I can't say for sure whether or not any of this is true. However, I did have a lot of fun researching them. They're extremely fascinating creatures. Oh god, I sound like a freaking English <laughs> professor. <laughs> oh god. But anyways, on a scale of 1 to 10, I give these monsters a solid 7. I hope you all enjoyed listening to this, and I'm sorry if it was too short and too summarized. And I'm really sorry if I got any of this wrong, because I can't seem to do research well. Oh god, what is wrong with me? So, before I say anything else stupid, I'm just going to end this little informational outburst here, I guess. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that was so terrible. But I hope you all enjoyed it anyways. Honestly, it was a lot of fun researching skinwalkers. They're a lot of fun to read about, and I'll leave links below so you guys can read about them too. And I honestly hope that I can make more videos like this. Like I said, I really enjoy talking about monsters. And before I forget, because I have the memory of a goldfish, I want to tell you guys that I made an amino. On it I'll be posting art, and you guys can even vote for different things like what designs I put up on Rebubble, as well as what videos I'm going to make next. Amino is honestly so much fun, and there are so many communities to join. And with all that said and done, I'll see all you jelly beans in the next video. Bye!